So good morning, everybody, and happy Navaratri. We are in the last couple of days of the nine days celebrating the goddess. And so these last couple of days are dedicated to Saraswati, and she's the goddess of wisdom. She's the goddess of communication, poetry. Um, she's the goddess of reminding us of our infinite self, and put it that way, spiritual practice, spiritual awareness. That's what she brings with her. But also what she brings, or what it said that she brings is an awareness to our mind. So she is very much the energy of our mind. She's very much the energy of our thought space, of our ethereal you know, reality, the unseen reality. And it says that what she brings is this quality of discernment. And so discernment is being able to differentiate between two things or being able to differentiate between what is true and what is untrue on many levels. So it's not just a simple kind of like, well, that doesn't sound like it's true. This sounds like it's true. It's on all of the levels of realizing not just what we're hearing on the outside, but what we are interpreting about our experience from the inside. So often when people hear this, they start going into this you know, thing of being able to tell if someone's lying to you. What's more important is discernment is the ability to recognize when you're lying to yourself, right? It's the ability to start to be able to see how your mind is working and all of the different ways that you um, grasp onto ideas, all the different ways that you grasp onto concepts that are already preconceived, right? That you've already decided it's this way or it's that way, it's right or it's wrong. And you're no longer looking for whether or not it's true. You're looking for whether or not it's comfortable. You're looking for whether or not it makes sense with what you've already experienced. So this is what we're told is the core challenge in our human experience. And also the main thing that we're working with in a yoga practice is this ability to discern all of the ways that we misrepresent the truth to ourselves, right? Because if we can master that, if we can master how our mind is working, and that doesn't mean changing it, it means just knowing this is the way our mind is working. And we can catch ourselves when we're grasping, right? At different ideas to um, keep this framework of our thinking the same. If we catch ourselves in that, then we can actually receive the world, perceive the world in a much more free way. And that's Saraswati. She says that no matter what the world has given you, you have the power to free yourself and only you have the power to free yourself. It has nothing to do with anybody else, right? So my tagline for her is recognize all of the very interesting, complicated ways that you have learned to lie to yourself. And when you've gotten good at noticing all the ways you've learned to lie to yourself and you've unraveled those, when you can tell yourself the truth, right? With no... Um, obstruction, then you can start to look at what somebody else is saying, right? So comfortable seat if you're not there already. The other way to say that we sometimes say in, in spiritual places is mind your own mind. It's Saraswati. You have to mind your own mind first. Find the truth that's there and all of the untruths that are there. And also recognize it as that incredibly fertile ground that creates your reality, right? eyes closed if you're not there. And the Buddhists say this too, is that the material world is a projection of your mind, how you perceive it. So whatever you place in your mind is going to influence the way that you experience the world. Take very deep breaths. Saraswati, they say, rides on the breath. So as you are inhaling the breath, mentally repeat the sound Om. Exhaling, mentally repeating the sound OM. And breathing not mechanically, but breathing with a sense of actually pulling the air in. So you're receiving, you're pulling in creation. You're holding it for a moment and then exhaling, you're simply letting it go. Breathing in the infinite, and you hold it for a moment in this finite shape. And then you exhale and you let it go. A couple more breaths like that where you are consciously directing your thoughts to the idea that you are breathing in the infinite. Every breath you're doing this. And then you're exhaling, easily letting it go.
You have the power to free yourself from anything and everything. If you remember that infinite space, it makes it a little easier to let things change. And let the hands come up palm to palm in front of the heart. We'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys. You can release your hands, please. And then just bring your hands to your knees, your thighs, and begin to cat cow, a seated cat cow. Good. And I want you to really use the connection of your hands to your legs as a firm kind of uh, anchor or a bracket so that the arms are actually really holding you and you can move your spine a little bit more completely. Good. So a little bit of active energy in the arms so that as you're inhaling up, lengthening, you're actually pulling back on the arms to lift the chest. And as you exhale and round back, the arms are holding you so you can really push back through your rib cage. Nice. Good, you guys. This ability to be able to recognize the truth That often means, usually means we have to let go of what we decided that we really liked. Let go of the idea that, well, this has been working for me for so long, maybe I should just leave it alone. If it's not true, don't leave it alone. Recognize why you have adopted the thought patterns that you have, even if they seem like they're working. Recognize where there is untruth. Good, and then come back to stillness, please. Take the hands behind the head, elbows wide. Good, press the head back into your hands so you get a long throat. Hug those elbows in just a little bit and then spinal twist to your right. Good, keep pressing the head back into your hands. Good, and then bring that uh, left hand to your right knee, please. Good, and again, use the hand, so bend that elbow, drag yourself a little deeper into the twist as you exhale, and then shift your ribs to your left. That's it. And then twist a little deeper, head still pressing back into your hand. Nice, and then come back to center, please, both hands behind the head. Good, head presses straight back, elbows hug slightly forward, twist to your left. Good, from your spine, so deep exhale as you're doing that. It's like you're falling back into the back of your rib cage. And then right hand reaches for left knee. Good. And then a deep inhale. As you exhale, bend that right elbow, drag yourself a little deeper into the twist, but pull your ribs and your belly back. Good. Press your head back into your hand. Nice. Don't let your left shoulder hike higher. Drop it down. Lift your right side ribs. That's it. And then come all the way back to center, please. Nice job. Take the hands forward. Walk yourself onto hands and knees. Come into child's pose, knees wide, big toes together to touch. Drop your hips back to your heels. Make a little pillow with your hands, bend the elbows, place your forehead on your hands. Breathe into the upper back, breathe into the armpits. Good. all of the places that feel like they are a little bit restricted. When we use those cues and we ask you to breathe into those places, often there's, there's someone in you know, the general population that says, you know, your breath doesn't actually go there. Your breath goes into your lungs, it goes here, it goes there. It doesn't go into your toes, it doesn't go there. And they're right, it doesn't. But consciously sending your mind to those places with the intention of breathing deeper physiologically starts to relieve tension in those places, relieves tension everywhere. 
One more deep breath, dropping wide through your chest. Good. And then come back up to hands and knees, downward facing dog. So this is the teaching of Saraswati, right? Is get out of the sense that only the logical things in your mind, only the things that you have previous information that say this must be true because so-and-so agrees with me. It's not the only truth. It's not the full, complete truth. Good. Right leg comes up and back behind you. Inhale the breath. Good. And then step that foot forward between the hands. Lunge. Nice. Drop the back knee. Use a blanket there if you'd like. Inhale both arms to the sky. Anjaneyasana. Bring the hands behind the head again. Squeeze the elbows slightly forward. Pull up through your ribs. Drop the head back into the hands. Lift the heart towards the sky. Back bend. And send your hips forward. Good. And then stretch the arms to straight alongside your ears, still reaching the heart to the sky. Beautiful. And then bring it all the way back up to center. Release the hands down to the floor, both hands inside the front foot. Good. Lift that back knee up, please. And then start to make big circles with that right hip. Nice, you guys. Don't forget the backwards action in that circling. Good. It's pretty much typical in all cases, right? That our weight starts to move all the way forward onto the front leg. Move your pelvis towards the back. Get that lift of the pelvis up and back. That's it. Good. And then come back to stillness, please. Left hand plants, right arm to the sky, spinal twist. Nice. And then while you're there, flex that right foot, drop onto the baby toe. If you can, if your back knee needs to be on the floor for that, that's fine, but open that knee and then lean back more onto that left hand, open your chest more. Yeah, nice, Laura, nice area. Good, and then release that right foot back to flat, release both hands, nice job. Both hands inside the front foot, walk to your left, come to the center of your mat, straight in both legs, prasarita padottanasana, turn the toes. Good, wide-legged stance. Beautiful. Hands underneath the shoulders, please. Right hand plants, take the left arm to the sky or to your low back, spinal twist. Good, keep both thighs pulling wide. Nice, release and switch. Left hand down to the floor, right hand to your lower back, spinal twist. Opening with your breath, inhaling. Good, release that hand down to the floor. Good, left hand to the sky or to your lower back. Open on the inhale, spinal twist. Bring your throat with you. There you go. And then release that hand down to the floor, right arm up to the sky, spinal twist. Keep your legs really steady, moving through your spine. Good, release that hand down to the floor. One more time, left arm to the sky. Good. And then release that hand down to the floor. Nice job, bow your head please, relax the spine, let the elbows bend. Good, maybe that even means letting your knees bend. Yeah, good. And then start to walk yourself back towards the top of your mat. Right toes turn forward, left toes spin up, step back downward facing dog. Good, slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down to the floor slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good, point the toes back behind you. Rise up, little baby cobra, inhaling, lifting just a little bit, and then exhaling, releasing down. Good, and then inhaling up again, moving with your breath and releasing down. So I want you to think about this, you guys, that what pretty much what always happens in your cobras is that you have this kind of your chest lifts and then your head jerks up to like meet where your chest landed. So think of that fluidness that as you're breathing, your spine is uncurling into your cobra. So keep going, inhaling up into a little baby cobra, exhaling down. So you have that feeling that there's never a moment where you are jerking your chin up or your head up to try and get in line with your spine. Is it's just a fluid action of inhaling up through your spine, through the crown of the head and exhaling, releasing down. Good, don't make it mechanical. You're not doing push-ups. Good, if you're not sure how to not make it mechanical, take your fingers off the floor. <laughs> Use just your back. Good, 
and then release back to your belly, please. Forehead to the floor. Good. Pause for a moment. Release the arms alongside you or pillow under your forehead. Good. I want you to keep breathing. We always say this in every practice. We're talking about your breath. We're asking you to remember to breathe. And I guarantee that your habits are in certain poses or certain moments that, of course, you intend to listen and to remember to breathe. And then you don't. So take the opportunities to remind yourself of what it is to consciously be connected to your breath. That doesn't mean that in every pose you have to have your mind solely focused on, am I breathing? But to keep the connection of, I feel the breath as it flows in and as it flows out. I can feel the pulsation of my body as it expands and contracts. That's what we're looking to maintain. Forehead back to the floor, please. Hands behind your head, elbows wide. Pressing the feet down, pressing the thighs down, lift your elbows up. Good, and then feel that you are trying to dig the tips of your elbow points down towards your hips. So pull down so that those armpit muscles start to wake up. Good, yeah, so you're just dragging down. Good, and then start to lift head, neck and chest. Gaze stays at the floor. So you're not tilting your chin forward at all. Just press the back of your head up into your hands. Good, feel the upper back, wake up. Drag those elbow tips down towards your hips. Good, feet on the floor. That's it. And then release, please. Nice job. Walk your hands back alongside your ribs. Press back downward facing dog. Nice. Good, you guys. Left leg comes up and back, down dog split. Do it with your breath. Good, step that foot forward between the hands. Drop the back knee, use a blanket underneath that knee if you need, and then inhale the arms to the sky, Anjaneyasana. Right, so every time you hear those cues, right, inhale your arms to the sky, notice, are you taking your arms up and then remembering, oh yeah, I'm supposed to inhale, or is the inhale moving the arms, right? Ideally, we're looking for the inhale to move the arms. Hands behind your head, good. Hug your inner elbows forward slightly so you get that hollowing of the, of the inner armpits and then start to lift the chest, drop the head back into your hands. Don't let your elbows fall wider though. So the chest drops open, but the elbows hug slightly in. So you keep your shoulder blades where they need to be on your back and then send your pelvis forward a little more. That's it. Good, now stay there, but stretch the arms out to straight. Again, reaching through the fingertips, but now drag down from your armpits, pull down and the chest lifts. That's it, hands come back down to the floor, both hands inside the front foot, lift the back knee up, make big circles with that hip. Remembering that you're not just falling forward with those circles, but that you are equally pressing your hips back in space. Nice, you guys. Discernment, all of the ways that you have adopted patterns because for one reason or another, it worked, quote unquote. And maybe you knowingly every day go through those same thoughts saying, I know this isn't true, but I'm gonna stick with it anyway. I know there's problems with this idea, but I'm gonna ignore that. I know that when I practice this way, my knee always hurts later, but eh, I'll deal with that when it comes. Start to notice the places where you lie to yourself. Good, come back to stillness, please. Good, right hand plants, left arm to the sky, spinal twist. Nice, shoot that right hip wider to the right in the twist. So again, you're balancing your pelvis and then flex your left foot, drop the knee wide, come onto the baby toe of that left foot if you can. Again, if, you can, if it's not working for you, back knee can be on the floor or just keep the foot flat. Lean a little bit more onto that right hand, open your chest as that knee falls away. Good. Yeah, you're great there, Kristen. Nice, you guys, nice, Lynn, nice, Tom. And then release the hand, take the foot back to flat. Both hands come inside the front foot, walk to your right, come back to the center of your mat, straighten both legs, turn your toes, prasarita padottanasana. Yeah. Nice, you guys. And just go ahead and start to let your knees bend 
leaning maybe over to the right for a side, little mini side lunge. So not a full side lunge, but bending the right knee, letting your pelvis go in that direction, coming back to center, bending your left knee, going in that direction. Good. So Saraswati's name is often translated as the flowing one, the one that flows. So there is again, that idea that your thoughts are always flowing. The mind is a fluid place. It's our tendency to keep grabbing the same thoughts over and over again that makes us feel like it's static, that it's the same all the time. So the practice is, is that you connect more with your breath and that connects you back to the fluidity of your mind. You can free yourself from anything, any thought. It's only true and real and necessary as long as you are grasping it. Good, come back to center please, to stillness, nice. Walk your belly towards your right thigh. So turn your belly towards your right leg. Good. And then come back to center, walk your belly towards your left leg. So again, still twisting through the trunks. So you're still letting your shoulders turn. Like you're really trying to take your belly onto that thigh. And then come back to center, go to the right one more time, turn the belly, twist from your trunk. So really turn from the top of your left hip, you're turning in. Good, come back to center one more time to the left. Twisting from your trunk, getting low in towards that leg, reach. Nice, Robin. And then come back to center, please. Nice, bend both knees, drop your butt, drop your thighs, walk your fingertips forward so you're like uh, in a bent kneed down dog, wide legs. Good, push those inner knees wide, scoop your belly, drop your tail. Good. You got it. And then start to straighten the legs again. Walk the hands back. Good. Walk back towards the top of your mat. Left toes turn forward, right toes spin up. Step back, downward facing dog. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow, coming through knees first if you need. Good. Bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt. Hands stay alongside your ribs, press down through your thighs. Good, and that same feeling of your lifting with your breath, inhale upper body up into cobra. Press down into your thighs. And as you lift up, lift from the front of your pelvic bones. They rise up with you. Nice. And then release your forehead back to the floor. Beautiful, keep the knees bent. This time, if you can, reach back right hand for right ankle, left hand for left ankle. If reaching the ankles is not gonna work, keep your hands right where they are. Good, draw your heels down towards your butt. Keep your knees in line with your hips so don't let them fly wide. Keep your heels rooted down and then begin to bend your elbows, lift head, neck and chest. Keep your thighs on the floor. Good, bend your elbows a lot so you get into your shoulders. Good, press the thighs down, lift through the front edge of your pelvic bones. Good, elbows are bending a lot. Nice, you guys, and then release. Beautiful, stretch the legs back behind you. Good, bend the elbows alongside you again, plant the hands, rise up, cobra, lift head, neck and chest, legs straight. Good, did you lift with your inhale or did you remember to breathe after you got into the pose? Just curious, downward facing dog. Good. Right leg comes up and back, down dog split. Bend the knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, stack the right hip on top of the left. Deep inhale, good reach. Beautiful, and then point that knee towards the floor, please. You're gonna bring it forward and across the body. So bring your knee forward, shoulders forward, touch your right knee to your left elbow. Good, and then send the leg up and back, down dog split. Bend the knee, kick the heel in, stack right hip on top of left. See where I'm going with this. Good, point the knee down towards the floor, bring it forward, touch that knee to your left elbow. Good, I want you to squeeze into your trunk. Take it all the way up and back one more time. Leg all the way up, down dog split, bend the knee, kick the heel and stack right hip on top of left. That's it. And then point the knee at the floor, bring it forward, touch the knee to the left elbow. Yep, nice, and then up and back. Beautiful, right foot steps forward between the hands. 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> Drop the back heel, baby toe parallels back of your mat, warrior two. You're like, warrior two is not a resting pose. That's not relief. You're not on your shoulders. You're not on your arms anymore. Don't complain. <laughs> Good. Chest wide, shoulders wide. Turn your palms to face up, please. That's it. And just do little lifting of your arms, little pumping of the arms. Yeah, all the way from your armpits, all the way from your shoulders. My upper back is cranky. That's why you're doing all this. <laughs> Nothing to do with you. You're just fixing my back. Good. And then come to steadiness, please. Keeping the palms up, though, lifting through the armpits and softening, extending out through the tops of your shoulders. Nice. Keep the palms, both palms facing up. Drop the left palm or the left hand to your back leg. Right arm reaches up to the sky. Reverse warrior. Both palms continue to face up. So that hand that's on the back leg, turn the palm up. Good. And then come back up to center, please. Nice job. Straight in the front thigh. Reach the right arm forward. Extend right rib cage forward. And then let that right hand touch down. Both palms still facing up. Keep the palm facing up. Left arm to the sky. Good. So you got to press that hand against your leg. Yeah. Instead of collapsing onto it. You got it. Yep. Palms facing up. You're right where you should be, Mark. Good. Robin, just move your shoulder back, your left shoulder back a little more and let your left hand come forward towards your face. Let it come forward, forward, forward. So yeah, you soften the arm a little bit. Good. Nice, you guys. Bend that right knee again, please. Release both hands down inside the front foot. Keep your back heel flat. Walk to your left just a little bit until you feel resistance. And then just bend your elbows. Again, don't think of this as, oh, this is a hard pose to hold. Just bend your elbows and breathe. You're not here for that long. It's like the metaphor for life, right? Just relax and breathe. You're really not here for that long. And then walk yourself back towards the top of your mat. Good. Spin your back heel up. Step your left foot forward just a little bit. Take both legs to straight. Parsvottanasana. Use blocks underneath the hands if you'd like. Good. So Laura, step your left foot a little wider to the left and then step it forward a little bit more. A little more, forward more. Yeah, forward more. Yeah, especially because you've got low back going stuff going on is don't, uh, don't try and force the stance wider because it's just gonna create more um, hard pulling on your back. Good, you guys. Squeeze the feet towards each other. Bend your elbows, relax. <laughs> there you go, nice Stacy. Good. There's a discernment. How much do you hold yourself tense in your life? When something is hard or even when it isn't hard, you're just used to being tense. So we're asked to look at and then reconnect to that easy flow of the breath because that will free your mind. And if your mind is free, then you live free in your life. Doesn't matter what the circumstances are. Good. Start to walk yourself a little bit more towards your right. You can bring a block with you. So either take that block to right to the inside of your front foot or take it to the baby toe side for a little deeper twist. You're coming into revolve trikonasana. So the left hand is gonna reach for, again, either right inside the big toe or over the ankle to the baby toe. Right hand comes to your right hip. Keep your hips drawing back in space. Squeeze your feet towards each other. Push your inner thighs away from each other and then start to turn your belly. Stack that right shoulder, good, on top of the left. Then at the last moment, if you'd like, take that right arm up to the sky. Good, if it feels better to keep it at your shoulder and just keep stacking the ribs and opening the chest, stay there. Good, get long through your spine. Good, so switch your hands, Tom. Tom, you gotta switch your hands. Oh no, you were right, I'm sorry. <laughs> good, release the hands down to the floor. Nice, you guys. Bend that front knee, please. Step the left foot forward, top of your mat. I guess I still have a little bit of whatever my problem was last week where I just could not look at you guys and figure out which way is right and left on your screens. Couldn't do it. Bend your knees, drop your belly onto your thighs. Hang for a moment, drop your head. Let your palms face up, backs of the hands touching the floor like a rag doll, just hang there. Good. 
And then keep that feeling in your upper back and just start to straighten the legs, not with the intention of locking them, but just with the intention of just getting longer through your legs. And then bend your knees again, hang, good. And then start to straighten your legs again. Again, let it be a fluid action that you're not getting to that position of locked and unlocked, locked and unlocked. Bend the knees again, fluid and start to straighten the legs. So you're practicing finding that place where the legs feel engaged, but not locked. One more time, bend your knees. Upper body's still just hanging. It's not doing anything. Good. And then let the legs start to come towards straight. Nice. Beautiful. Plant the hands, step back downward facing dog. And if you feel like you weren't doing that very well, that's okay. And keep moving with your breath. Left leg comes up and back down dog split. Second side, fun stuff. Bend the knee, kick your heel in, stack the left hip on top of the right. Good, point the knee down towards the floor, bring the knee shoulders forward, bring that left knee to your right elbow, squeeze in, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze for your belly. And then take that leg up and back, down dog split. Good, bend the knee, kick your heel in, stack the left hip on top of the right, open whole side body, draw that knee back. Good, and then point the knee at the floor, Bring your shoulders forward, bring the knee forward, touch that right elbow. So you're crossing the body, keep it as high up as you can. Good, and then send it up and back, down dog split. Nice job, bend the knee, kick your heel and stack left hip on top of right. Nice, Susan. And then point the knee down at the floor. One more time, bring it forward, touch that right elbow, squeeze in. Good, and then leg up and back, down dog split. Nice, Harriet, good, Elizabeth. Good, left foot steps forward between the hands. Nice, back heel drops, baby toe parallels back of your mat, warrior two. Take the arms up, shoulders up over the hips. Good, and then turn your palms to face up again. This time little circles with your arms, forward or back up to you, but little circles. Good. Again, feeling the whole arm. So not just moving your wrist, move your whole arm from your armpits. Thank you. Good. Good. Keep the torso as stable as you can, but move your arms, little circles. Nice, you guys. And then come to stillness. Again, the hugging in of the shoulder blades and the lengthening out from the tops of your shoulders palms up, drop that right hand down to the back leg, palm still faces up, reach the left arm to the sky, reverse warrior, drop into your feet. So your exhale, drop into your legs. Yeah. And then come back up to center, please. Nice job, straight in the front thigh, both palms still facing up, extend that left rib cage forward, reach for triangle with the palms still facing up. Good, so the right hand reaches up, left hand reaches down, but keep that rotation on the shoulder, the openness of your chest. Good, so the, that front hand can press into the leg for support. Nice, you guys. So everybody, that arm that's in the air, bring it a little closer towards your face. So you're softening the front of that right shoulder joint and then move your rib cage back. So again, draw in your low belly and twist from there. Good. Nice, you guys. Bend the front knee. Release both hands down to the floor, both hands inside the front foot. Keep the back heel flat. Walk to your right just a little bit until you start to feel resistance. Good. So front knee continues to pull wide. Left butt cheek continues to draw in and back. Good, Stacy. A little more. Move that knee wide. Pull your butt in. That's it. Yep. Other way. Good. And then walk yourself back to the top of your mat, please. Spin your back heel up, step that right foot forward just a little bit, take both legs to straight, Parsvottanasana. Good. And Laura, I would say same thing, step that right foot forward a little bit more. Nice, you guys. Discernment is described, right? Saraswati rides on a swan and it's actually the swan that's said to be able to bring you that quality of discernment that the swan can, um, if you mix milk and water, the swan can drink just the milk, leave the water. 
So it's your ability to take all of the different experiences that you are given and to draw from it the significant meaning and leave behind all of the other stuff. Right? Leave behind all of the other interpretations, all of the complicated emotions that don't serve. Might be fun to play with, but it doesn't serve. You start to do this with your mind. How often are you telling yourself that you are bad or things are bad or not things are not as they should be? You start to realize, are these things true or do they simply work with what I've experienced before? And that's the important part is that you catch it. It's not important that you change the thought immediately. That's maybe the next step. To be able to catch yourself in those moments where you are accepting untruth because it's convenient. Or because it's what you've been taught and it really means something to you to believe the same thing that someone else in your life believes. No problem. Just catch yourself in those moments of knowing that something you are holding on to is not completely true. That's what frees you. Start to walk yourself towards that left leg, towards the front leg. Bring a block with you if you'd like. Again, the block can either go right inside the big toe or it can cross the foot to the baby toe if you're using it. So right hand plants, again, same thing, either right inside the big toe or crosses the ankle. If you can, if you're, if you're crossing the ankle, try to press your forearm and your ankle against each other. Revolve trikonasana. Left hand comes to your left hip. Good, start to turn your belly. As you turn your belly, pull that right hip and thigh back and wide. Good, and maybe this is where you stay, just lifting that left shoulder, stacking. Maybe you take the left arm up to the sky. Good, if it feels like you are straining through your shoulder or your neck to take that left arm up, keep the hand at your hip, don't lie to yourself. Good, and then release back to center, please. Unwind your twist. Nice job, bend the left knee, step the right foot forward, top of your mat. Good, bend both knees, drop the sit bones low for chair, inhale the arms up to the sky. Good, bring all of your weight onto your right foot, please. Come up onto the ball of your left foot. Good, and then float that left foot up off of the floor. Yep, just hover it. Don't let your weight lean to the right. There you go, drop that left foot please, straight into chair, all your weight into your left foot, come up onto the ball of the right foot. Good, hover that foot up off of the floor, don't lean everything all the way over to the left, don't tip over. Try to stay as level as you can. Good, release that foot to the floor please, come all the way up to stand. Deep breath in, little baby back bend, lift the heart like you're doing cobra, standing up. Good, and then bend the knees again, drop back into chair. So you're either gonna do the same thing that you just did or bring the weight into the right foot, bring the left foot up, stack your left ankle on top of your right thigh. So left ankle to right thigh, bonus points if you're doing this holding a cat. <laughs> Good, hands to heart center, please, if you have the ankle stacked. Prayer twist, left elbow hooks to the instep of your left foot right foot, whatever. Yeah, don't confuse me, Sarah. <laughs> Good, come all the way back to center, please. Release that left foot down to the floor. Come up to stand, arms to the sky. Standing, a little baby back bend. Again, like you're doing cobra pose, standing up. Feel the lift at the top of your pelvis, top of your thighs. Good, and then drop back into chair, bend the knees. Good. And then all of the way into your left foot, hover the right foot off of the floor. Again, either stay there or stack the right ankle on the left thigh. Or again, I think I saw Kristen come into eagle pose here. So that's a good variation for you. Good. Hands to heart center, please. Prayer twist. Your right elbow comes to the instep of that right foot. I know it sounds like it's same side, but because the foot is crossed over your left thigh, you're still twisting. Good. Nice variation there too, Lynn. I like that. Good, nice, 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 nice mark. And then slowly release, come on out. Beautiful, plant both feet, arms to the sky. 
Good. And then bring hands to heart center, standing up. Nice, Stacy. Good. Lift the heart. High, 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 high. Lift the chest. High, high, high. Lift up through the tops of your thighs. Baby back bend. Good. Heart to the sky. Heart to the sky. Heart to the sky. Keep tilting back, but heart to the sky. Good. Nice, nice, nice. Top the, tops of the thighs lift, but the inner thighs pull back. Beautiful. And then all the way back up to center, please. Beautiful. Good. Bow forward, rolling down the spine, forward fold. Good. Step your right leg back behind you. Drop that back knee. Use a blanket there if you'd like. Inhale the arms up, Anjaneyasana. Good. Hands to heart center. Prayer twist, right elbow to the outside of the left knee. Push your inner thighs wide. Beautiful. Good, keep your pelvis moving forward in your prayer twist so your front knee stays over the front ankle and then you're drawing your belly back away from your thighs. That's it, nice Elizabeth. Good, Andy. Beautiful, come all the way back to center, arms to the sky, reach up. Find that back bend again, lifting from your belly, heart to the sky, heart to the sky, heart to the sky. Good, for some of you, if you wanna get really wild, bend your back knee, kick your heel in towards your butt as though you're gonna take your heel to the back of your head. Nice, Alice. Awesome. And then slowly release all the way back up, hands down to the floor. Good, lift the back knee, step back downward facing dog. Good, vinyasa if you choose or take a child's pose, vinyasa is coming forward to plank, lowering down towards the floor, chaturanga or to your belly, rising up cobra or upward facing dog if you're feeling that excitement in your back, nice Harriet and then downward facing dog as you're ready. Good, I love a good upward facing dog when your back is really awake. Don't love upward facing dog if your back is not fully awake. Left foot steps forward between the hands. Is that the same side we just did? No, okay. <laughs> Drop the back knee, good. Inhale the arms up to the sky, high lunge. Told you I still have a little bit of whatever was wrong with me last week that I just couldn't figure out what was going on. Hands to heart center. Good, prayer twist, right elbow to the outside of your left knee. It is the same, right? It is. You guys, <laughs> come back to center. Switch your legs, please. I knew it. Right leg is forward. Drop the back knee, arms up. Hands to heart center. Prayer twist, left elbow to the outside of your right knee. Ugh. Catch yourself when things are simply not true. <laughs> and then adjust, but do it with your breath. Good, come back to center, arms to the sky. Good. Again, find that back bend. So your chest is lifting, 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 lifting. Your belly's lifting, lifting, lifting. And you're dropping your heart to the sky, pulling your heart to the sky. And then if you want to get wild, bend that back knee, kick your heel in. Good. So it's like your back leg is doing a quad stretch, but you're not reaching for the foot. Good. Awesome, awesome. And then slowly release, come all the way back up, hands to the floor. Good, lift the back knee. Step back, downward facing dog. Good, deep breath in and then drop the knees to the floor, please, child's pose. I'd say Saraswati is also that energy that says when you intuitively, right, a little bell goes off in your head that says something's off here. And then what do you do? You ask the rest of the world around you and they're like, no, it's fine. <laughs> Sometimes we're all just mistaken. So we have to listen to that little intuitive voice, those little bells that go off in our head. And even if we still choose to run with what the rest of the world is doing, at least we listened, at least we heard it. This is that internal practice of knowing your own mind so well that you can catch yourself where you are grasping untruth for whatever reason. As soon as you know that you're grasping, you have the ability to let go. 
walk yourself back up. Please come on to your backs. Yay. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Good, bend the knees, plant your feet, arms alongside you. You're gonna breathe in and out of bridge pose because that's the theme of the day, breathing in and out of things. So as you inhale, you're gonna lift your hips up, float your arms up alongside your ears. Again, that's all the inhale breath. And then as you exhale, you're releasing the hips down, releasing the arms down. Again, this is coordinating breath and movement. So try to remember that as you inhale, the breath lifts your hips and lifts your arms. And the exhale, you're releasing the spine back down towards the floor. Good, careful that as you are lifting up, you're not pushing all of your weight into your shoulders. You will find yourself migrating off of your mat that way. The hips are lifting straight up and relaxing straight down. Good, and feel the rise and fall through the whole body so it's not just your hips. Good, so Mark, start with your hips on the floor and your arms uh, reaching towards your feet all the way down to the floor. Good. Now lift your hips and stretch your arms up alongside your ears all the way up. Hips up, arms up all the way up till your hands find the floor. There you go. That's your inhale. And then exhale all the way down. You got it. <laughs> Good. Fluid breaths, you guys, almost as though the inhale and the exhale fall into each other. Good. Nice. I know, don't worry about how many more breaths you're gonna do this for. Whether you like it or you don't like it, just don't worry. It's not forever. Beautiful, next time your hips come back down to the floor, stay there. Good. And then reset your feet in case they've wandered away from your sit bones. Bend your elbows, plant your upper arms into robot arms so fingers point up towards the sky. Cross your right ankle over top of your left thigh. Yep, so a one-legged bridge. Root down into the upper arms, lift from your armpits, press into that left heel and then lift your hips up off the floor. Good, try not to let your right hip drop lower than your left, it's gonna want to. So you keep your hips level, your knee will open to the degree that it makes sense with where your hip is going. So don't drop your hip to try to get your knee lower. That's it. Good, you guys. And now straighten that right leg straight up to the sky. That's it. Good, drag that left heel back, butt to your heel. Nice. And then release the right foot down to the floor. Awesome. Release the hips down to the floor. Pause for a moment. And then switch to the other side, left ankle over right thigh. Set the arms. Again, engaging from the armpits and the upper back. So really find that you are supporting yourself from your spine and then drag that right heel back, lift your hips up. Good, keep the left hip in line with the right. Nice, don't give in to the urge to just let your knee fall and bring your hip with it. Beautiful. And then stretch that left leg straight up. So that means your hips actually go higher because now you're pulling up. So Elizabeth, keep your right foot on the floor. Unless you're just doing a variation here, lift your hips up so you're in bridge pose. And then take the left ankle off of the thigh, stretch your left leg straight up. There you go, that's it. You got it. And then release that left foot down to the floor. Really nice, you guys don't collapse the bridge. And then release the hips. Good job. Beautiful, draw the knees in towards your chest, please. Circle the knees, whichever way you'd like, either knees together or knees can move apart from each other. And then come back to stillness, please. Bring the bottoms of the feet together, reach for your ankles. So don't drop the feet, but open the knees for Baddha Konasana, heels in towards your groin. So you'll notice, right? If you let your knees move too far away from your belly, it changes the feeling of your hip joints. So I want you to actually pull your knees, angle them up towards your armpits more. 
So your full lower back is on the floor and then drop your heels towards your groin. Good, so you keep that rotation of the thighs really solid in the hip socket and your low back really wide against the floor. Beautiful. And then squeeze your knees in towards your chest. Good. Stretch the legs straight up to the sky. Flex your feet. Take your arms up to the sky. Good, and then like you are trying to reach up to touch your toes, right fingertips reach up for your right toes. Yep, and then down, yep. So you gotta lift your shoulders a little bit and then left hand to left toes and down. Good, couple more times, right hand to right toes and down. Don't bring your legs closer. <laughs> left hand to left toes, I see you. And down, right hand to right toes. Keep your lower back on the floor. Left hand to left toes. Good, one more time each side, right hand to right toes. Extra, extra bonus points if you're doing this with a cat. <laughs> left hand to left toes. Good, and then just stay there, legs and arms to the sky, find your spine. Nicely done. Beautiful, and then hug your knees in towards your chest, squeeze, bring your forehead up to meet your knees, shoulders lift, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. And then release the upper back, stretch your arms out wide, scoot your hips over to the left, drop your knees to the right, spinal twist. Good, if having that right arm extended out wide does not, does not feel good, or sorry, it's your left arm, extended out wide doesn't feel good, take it up over the ear instead. Try to keep your knees on top of each other. Good, come back up to center, please. Scoot your hips over to the right, drop your knees to the left. Nice, and then bring yourself back to center, please. Good, and then set the legs out in front of you for Shavasana, arms alongside you, palms facing up. Finding your breath. finding the layers of your mind. The story of Saraswati is that she is born out of the vastness, the void, before there is creation. She rides out on her swan to the sound of Om, on the sound of Om. The expression of creation is her, the expression of creation, your thoughts is her. And she's the only goddess that in her stories is she's actually divorced from her consort because she did not, could not play the role that was expected of her. And rather than that being something that takes away from who she is, it gives her back the freedom to be everything that she is. So every piece of you that wants to grasp, to cling to an idea because it fits in the picture of the outside world, just notice it. And maybe with the practice of falling into the breath, connecting with the breath, it becomes a little easier to let go of the grasping. And the experience of your truest self rises up into that space where no other thought is occupying. This is Shavasana. Become your truest self. Remember your truest self.
Very gently bring the awareness back to your breath. The body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. As you're ready, draw your knees in towards your chest. Roll to your right side. And take a moment there before you begin to push the floor away. Come back to an upright seated position. Bringing the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. Saraswati, the flowing one. It's the reminder that that infinite self that we're reaching for is never far away. It's right here with whatever you're doing today, tomorrow, this instant. That infinite self is a part of it. It's experiencing this moment with you. The only thing that is not fully aware of that is your mind. So if your mind starts to become clearer about itself, starts to become aware of how much it is grasping certain concepts and ideas and holding on tight, that this is what keeps us in that state of tension. This is what keeps us in that state of fear or feeling like our life is holding us hostage. You have the power to free yourself. And the power to free yourself is by letting the mind be free of that grasping. So you don't have to judge any thought. You don't have to judge any idea. Is this the right one or the wrong one? That's not the point. Can you catch yourself in the act of grasping? This is the way we lie to ourselves. As soon as you can catch yourself, you have the ability to start to let that grasping go. And what you feel to be true, what you know to be true might change. It'll become more real. So this is the practice. Lead me from what is untrue to what is true, from what is unreal to what is real. Lead me from the fear of death, the knowledge of immortality. Asatoma sadgamaya, tamasoma jortir gamaya, ma amritam gamaya. Saraswati is your innate power to free yourself through your mind, to find your soul. Close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Remember, God is, sink, is as near to you as your next breath. Namaste. Thank you guys so much. Have a great rest of your day. Great rest of your week until I see you again. Weekend until I see you again, hopefully tomorrow. Um, you have to unmute yourself to say anything to me, but hope you're loving your lives. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Veronica. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Happy Thank you. That was great. And loved it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Grateful for you. Very grateful. Thank you. Very grateful yeah. for you guys too. My cat was mesmerized by you. Your cat was. Your cat. <laughs>